Hi Founder fans, Jason here. I am still on Long Island and we are still talking about the American Revolution and today we are going to be talking about the muckraking career of James Callender. Now James Callender was a muckraker well before muckraking was really a term. He just liked to be a rabble rouser in the papers during the revolutionary period. The thing is, James Callender didn't actually come to the United States until after George Washington was already president. The war was already over, the Constitution already written. But he became probably the most important journalist in North America for the first two, if not three, presidential administrations. So Callender grew up in, and was raised in, in England, and he published several pamphlets there criticizing Parliament's taxes. Now, this is not the same taxes that the American Revolution was fought over. This is actually criticizing internal taxes. And the King of England was not happy about this. So he decided to turn his wrath towards James Callender, who had to flee first to Ireland, then to the United States. And when he arrived in the United States, he decided to continue publishing papers and raking muck. So he goes in and he decides, he, he sides with the Democratic Republicans. So he attacks the Federalists. You know, he actually attacks George Washington on several occasions and makes a lot of enemies. But he eventually is the first person to publish the Reynolds Affair, which was when Alexander Hamilton had had an affair with, uh, on, cheated on his wife, and James Callender was the first person to bring this to national attention, which forced Hamilton to respond publicly and kind of forced him out of politics for a while, for most of the rest of his career. Now, Al uh, John Adams becomes president, and John Adams famously helped pass the Alien and Sedition Acts, the Sedition Acts in particular, well, the Sedition Act, I should say, was attack journalists who were attacking the president. You know, uh, well, this is a respectable administration. You got to treat us with dignity. And one of the main reasons, one of the main people that caused the passing of the Sedition Act was James Callender, because he was talking a lot of uh, trash about the John Adams administration. And Callender was arrested during the Adams administration and put into prison for about a year. The thing is, throughout the 1790s, while Callender was publishing all this anti-federalist material, he was secretly being paid by Thomas Jefferson, who was first Secretary of State and then Vice President of the United States. Now, they didn't know this at the time, of course. It wasn't public knowledge, but Callender and Jefferson had a pretty interesting relationship. So when Jefferson beat Adams to become president, he, day one, comes into office and pardons Callender. And Callender is like, thanks, I spent a year in jail for you. Hey, do you think I could be custom duty collector for the port of New York? I'm sorry, the port of Richmond, Virginia? Uh, and you would expect that Jefferson would say, yeah, you went to jail for me. You published all this stuff for me. Sure, you can be collector of customs duties at the port of Richmond, Virginia. But no, Jefferson actually said, well, Virginia is a really federalist hotbed in the South, and we don't want to make too many waves. So no, I'm going to choose a federalist to take this position. I'm not going to throw the biggest federalist critic into a federalist hotbed like that. The calendar didn't love this. He was very upset, actually, as you might imagine. So he turns on Jefferson and becomes a Demo uh, he becomes a Federalist and not only starts attacking the Democratic Republicans, but attacks Jefferson very in particular. In fact, he exposes several things about Jefferson. First, he, uh, uh, he acknowledges that, hey everyone, when Jefferson was Secretary of State, he was paying me to write against his administration. Doesn't look great for Jefferson. On top of that, he tells the story about Betsy Walker, who I've written about, who, when he was a younger man, already married, his best friend John Walker's wife, Betsy, Jefferson made several unbecoming passes at. Uh, he, he, he definitely overstepped the bounds of what friends should do to their friends' spouses. Um, and that's a whole nother conversation, but he brings that up. I will put a link about to the article I wrote down below. Uh, it's very creepy. Uh, for uh, one of the
of the main founders of the United States. Um, but either way, uh, Jefferson, uh, you know, he exposes this story, and then James Callender is the first person to write about Sally Hemings and the children Jefferson had with one of his slaves. And he puts all this out there. So Jefferson denies all this, of course, and, you know, he, he pretty much gets away with it uh, because he's the president, and this is a muckraking journalist who spent time in prison. Uh, interestingly enough, though, everything that he said about Jefferson, everything Calendar wrote about Jefferson was true. It's just when you put one person's word against another person's word and that one other person is president of the United States and happened to write the Declaration of Independence, you, you people seem to side with him. And unfortunately for Calendar now is the Federalists never came around to him. Now the Democratic Republicans are super angry at him because he's talking so much trash about their president. And the Federalists never said, oh, now that he's after Jefferson, he's okay. They were like, no, remember when he ruined Hamilton's career? So he kind of became a man without a home. And it seems that James Callender was always a heavy drinker. And he started drinking real heavy after this point. And unfortunately for him, he was found in uh, the James River face down in about three feet of water. And that's how he died. We don't really know how he got there. Of course, when he was found dead, there was all sorts of wild speculation about who killed him. But the truth be told, it seems that he just had too much to drink and fell in and couldn't find his way out. So that's the peculiar story of James Callender, possibly, probably the most important journalist of the first two decades of the American Revolution. Uh, by this time, Thomas Paine had already left the country for France. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, and you have, or please hit like. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments section below. Uh, other than that, uh, please subscribe if you're new here. I will probably be in this office one more day, maybe two more days, and then I will return to my normal setting. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to offering you another video tomorrow.